Good morning, everybody. We're getting ready to have our Bible study. We're trying to get connected here. God is good. We'll take the next few minutes if He can. We'll allow a few folks to get on here this morning. We're getting ready to um, get in God's Word. So if you've got a chance to log in here, maybe get something to write with, we've got several scriptures to go through today in our study. So I uh, just want to give you guys a heads up. We'll allow a few people to get on here, maybe get a little bit of a sound check as we get started. Praise the Lord. I'm glad you could be with us this morning. We're going to take just a second here and get set up, and then we're going to get right after it. Praise the Lord. So I'm Scott Mendes with Western Harvest Ministries, and we've got a great message together, uh, time uh, message put together so we can spend some time in God's Word. Good morning, Leslie. We're just going to allow a few folks to jump on here real quick before we open up in prayer and uh, get right into our message this morning. God is good. Amen. I'm excited. So having said that, we'll see if we can get a sound check here in just a minute and uh, we'll get right after today's message. We've been on the road traveling, as you can imagine. Summertime, busy schedule for sure. So, all right, Jesse, Casey, good morning, you guys. Thank you all so much for your faithful support and partnership. And as you know, each week, we, you know, we're going to open up in prayer. Good morning, Maya. Jesse, my old bull hand. How you doing, Jesse? Man, I'm really excited about this message. Again, we just came in off the road. I've been in Abilene at the Youth World Finals. Spent two days there. Uh, signing autographs we were able to pass out a whole case of the life of christ pamphlets uh, little booklets the amazing amazing uh, opportunity to sow god's word into their lives we passed out the fca new testament and that was exciting man there was over i think right at 388 contestants junior bull riders from all around the world australia mexico you name it I think there was even some Canadians and um, Brazilians there as well. So yes, thank you guys so much for being with me. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear me. I had to just run in here real quick and get inside of our fellowship center. And uh, that way we can control a little bit of the climate and lighting and so forth. Thank you guys so much, Heath, uh, Julie, you guys are, uh, what a blessing to be here each and every week. So. As you know, we are um, Western Harvest Ministry here in Weatherford, Texas. We travel, I speak, we partner with the FCA Cowboy Chapter and oversee that. So really we go where God sends us and uh, we're living in some exciting times and the opportunity is everywhere. Uh, a couple of weeks ago we had a cleanup day here at my arena and uh, even this week at Abilene I was able to uh, pass out some of my camps and literatures and how we do our school. So. I know God's getting ready to do some amazing things right here in Weatherford and wherever you guys are. So continue to send us emails. Thank you for your financial support, your love offerings. That totally helps fuel in the truck and get down the road. Uh, but most importantly, this is a teaching ministry. And we love to inspire, encourage, and engage you where you're at uh, so that you can grow spiritually in your relationship with the Lord. Amen. And so having said that, uh, let's just take a few minutes and open up in prayers. As you know, each week we get quite a few requests. Uh, some of these are in the areas of physical healing, financial breakthrough, and most importantly, I believe our job is to help you to understand with godly wisdom and discernment. Now you cannot have any of that without a relationship with Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit is the office of the counsel of God, and He will speak to your heart. He will send you to scriptures. He will send a song on the radio. He will do things creatively to minister to where you're at. Good morning, Daryl. Thank you guys again for sharing these messages. But the Holy Spirit is the one that orchestrates the Word of God in our life. The Word became flesh. The Word is God. Amen. And so... I know there's some things there, and I, I, know, I know that God didn't want to make things hard, but He also made things in a way that His children would understand, and those in the world that have not truly come into that saving knowledge and their salvation and their sanctification, they don't understand because they're looking through eyes that are trying to find fault 
or trying to figure out by ways that they have been taught or uh, raised up to understand in their belief system. And so in order to change the fruit in our life, we've got to go deep into the root system. And that's what God wants to do. So when we pray together, we stand in agreement. When we read God's Word, we believe that it is final authority over our life and that it's powerful, more powerful than anything in the world, including nuclear bombs, you name it. And that's exactly why we see the world trying to come against the Word of God and God's children and God's kingdom advancing. So having said that, this morning we want to pray that you will know how to hear God clearly as you spend time in His presence. You will never be God's disciple if you don't grow in a relationship with Him. You do that by spending time with Him. And that time that you spend with Him, He will show you things to come, things that were. But I promise you, He, he will forget and forgive the things of the past. And He will say, what are we doing in the present and the future going forward? Prophetically, We know where we are in our life. So having said that, let's pray for our country as we do every week. Let's pray for you, our partners. And let's pray for those that don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior to come and to know Him and to serve Him and to submit to Him. As we do those things, our life will be riding on course. Thus the title of this outreach. Amen used to be the name of our newsletter, still is, our apps, different things, but we want to ride on course with our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning. We praise you. We exalt you. We give you worship of our lips, of our mind, of our eyes, of our hearts. Lord, we ask you to invade our hearts, our homes, to guide our steps according to thy word. We know that Your Word is a lamp unto our feet. We know, Father God, that Your Word shall endure forever and ever. And even when we go to spend eternity with You in heaven, Your Word is set in stone so we can study it now. Open book with Your help. And Lord, as we die to ourself, we want to know more of You and You alone. Jesus only be exalted because, because His name is the mightiest name of all. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so we come to you this morning. We pray for our partners. Father, those that need financial breakthroughs, bless them. Thankful for our partners that sow into this ministry. Lord, bless them a hundredfold in the now and show them the things that you will do, Lord, as they trust you. I thank you for physical healing, Lord. You are in our DNA as we receive you everything stops and changes even to the cellular level of our life lord not scientifically the way they're doing things today but just in a love relationship with you you can change our bodies from the inside out and we don't have to do statin drugs we don't have to do all kinds of things that have many side effects lord you may start somebody there but lord you can help us in that journey to be free of things that are man-made and harmful and, 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 and all of those things. And so I ask, Lord, for the counsel of the Holy Spirit over our lives. And no matter where we start, we will finish different. Let us be better today in you and our relationship than we were yesterday. And that is by the reading of the Word. Father, we pray and intercede for our country, the things that are going on in the Middle East, the things that the news has censored against us. Lord, we know this is a wicked and perverse generation and we take authority by the blood of Christ right now in Jesus' name that we will not compromise our values. We will not cower down to the advancement of the values that we live by. God and country and family, we stand up for those things right now. We pray for leaders to rise up and engage and push back on this media and this banking system and, and all these things, Lord, uh, that have you seen the scientists trying to make themselves out as God and a, 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 tabo, a, a Babylonian tower going back up to the heavens to renounce and reduce you, Father God, in all the distractions, all the entertainment, all the finances, and all the control of this world. We will not give in to that. We give in to your system, your love, your word. Help us today, Lord, to gain spiritual insight from the study that we have put together 
by your orchestration. We love you and we praise you. We give, uh, ask for help in every area of office of government, national security, everything, Father God. Our homes, we love you and we praise you and ask you to be Lord of all or Lord of nothing. But we choose Lord of all. We, it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And all of God's children said, Amen and Amen. Well, I'm very, very excited uh, to be able to get in the Word of God with you guys today. Remember, we just came off the road. We've been in Abilene at the Youth World Finals. Um, fairly tired, but this isn't about uh, anything that I can do as a teacher. This is about God's Word and His Holy Spirit. So I ask Him right now, good morning, Joe and Carrie, to come to the reading of His Word. We have a foundational scripture in Psalms 119. I read this and I thought, man, this is a great uh, study to do. Um, it's pretty lengthy. I've got a lot of, of, of things that help me, so I am going to read a lot of scripture to us this morning. However, it is to encourage you in your walk. Psalms 119, we're going to read verses 9 through 16. Now, in this passage of Scripture, uh, let me give you just a little background. Uh, well, let's read it first. And as we read it, again, I've cut some Scriptures out, and then we'll turn to some. And if we get running a little bit on time this morning, then what we'll do is we'll come back and rebroadcast this. We always upload it to other platforms, and you guys can chew on it all week. It's a lot, I know. But man, um, it is really good. So in Psalms 119, verses 9 through 6, and then I'll tell you the title of today's message. Amen. Let's get ready to read this. Let's read this. Psalms 119, verses 9 through 16. It says, How can a young man clean, cleanse his ways? By taking heed according to your word. With, your, with my whole heart I have sought you, Oh, let me not wonder from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O oh Lord. Teach me your statutes with my lips. I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as I as much as in all your riches I will meditate on your precepts and compensate compensate comp, uh, con contentment your ways I will delight myself in your statutes and I will not forget your word so this is found in Psalms 119 verses 9 through 16. Now I want to give you just a little bit of things that I found and study helps about Psalms 119. Number one, you've got to remember that it's the longest book of the Bible. It is also the longest chapter in the Bible. And Psalms also is divided into 22 parts. Each part begins with a different letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And so when you turn over to Hebrews, each line of these parts begin with those letters. And so it is this significant to what we're going to be pulling from this. You see, when you take a passage of Scripture and you use it as a foundation, we see that God is speaking into our lives in the current. See, you got to believe that God's Word is alive and well, and it's for you today in your life. It's not a historical book that sits on the coffee table or in your gear bag or in your truck only to look good to others or only to read it occasionally when you're having trouble. No, we're going to learn today that the psalmist, the one that wrote the Bi wrote this, pa this book of the Bible, he gives us indicators in here how to live a victorious life, right? So we see these things are significant and every one of these letters in the Hebrew and over uh, in the Hebrew al alphabet uh, it are important. So the content of this chapter it begins to talk about respect of God's word it talks about how to praise God and how to honor God's word so these things that we see provided in this passage this foundational scripture that we're going to teach on this morning uh, give us a couple of things it shows us a path it shows us a purpose 
And it also shows us how we are to praise God and how He has set His Word over our lives and over our heart. Amen? Isn't that good? Uh, i got to wet the whistle a little bit there. Thank you, guys. So let's look at this. What are some of the things that... Let's just say we're going to title this, The Word Cleanses Us, right? Because God's Word to the believer is the playbook to life. It's the manual to your heart. It is the manual to how to raise children, how to have a relationship with your spouse. You don't have God's Word then you're not going to live a cleansed life. And you can miss the things and the benefit that God has for you as His children. So God's Word describes in several, in several different words in the Psalms. Now He talks about these things, different translations. In fact, when I began to read some Scripture to you this morning, I even had my uh, computer... Uh, left into the King James by accident, but it works the same to me. I, I really teach out of the New King James, but let's study this together. God's Word is described in various translations in different places in the Bible. Number one, God's Word has been mentioned as laws, as testimonies, as ways, you know, paths and, and, and ways of doing things, precepts, statutes, commandments, judgments or the word of God and even is described as truth. So, to help us write on course, to help us study each and every week, we use God's word as the ultimate authority in our ministry, in our lives, in our minds, in our heart, in our soul, which is our mind, will, and emotion. That way, we can use it as a barometer, as a straight line or a plumb line against the world because the world has its own system of doing things many times when we're double-minded or somebody thinks that they're so smart that they can outsmart god in his wisdom and his ways and his precepts that they are double-minded and what happens uh in this is that they are deceived so all of these words are used to refer to god's word there is great respect for God's Word in the book of Psalms. Amen. Again, it's the longest chapter of the Bible, book of the Bible, many chapters, but 119 is the longest of all. We ought to have this same kind of respect in everything we do in a public forum, in our family, in our driveway, on our entryways to our ranch. We should give some kind of symbolism or some kind of attention to God is Lord over our family over the things that we steward, over the business that we are in. And when we put God first, everything else begins to line up in our life. Amen. So we don't keep that hidden. And we need to do that in our hearts, in our minds. Without God's Word, we cannot have the information that we need for our salvation. Many times people will say, I got saved. Saved from what? You don't believe in God. You don't even know what that person is talking about. I got saved or I conquered the beast that rages in my soul to keep me separated from God Himself, right? And so I got saved from, from me. I got saved from Scott. The way I was taught, the environment that I was raised in, the things that I put my hands to, and the thoughts that I had that I was going to be somebody on my own. And again, these are for other messages, but we need the information of God's Word for our salvation so that we may be saved and live eternally with our Heavenly Creator, God the Father, right? And He's much more than that. We ought to join the psalmist in praising God of His wonderful Word. So in this discussion that we read this morning, we see that the Word of God cleanses us. And we saw in these verses, the first one, verse 9 says, How can a young man cleanse his way, thus the title of today's message and study, right? By taking heed according to your word, with my whole heart I sought you. See, I believe that there are Christians and then there are Christ-like. There are converts and then there are those that have been discipled. Those, there are those that give God worship with their lips, but their hearts are far from them. They say that they are believers 
but even the devils and Satan himself believe we must be discipled and that is why we are studying God's Word. Listen to Deuteronomy 6, verses 6 and 7. It says, And these words which I commanded thee this day shall be in thy heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently. How do we teach diligently? Now to who? Unto thy children. And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in the house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou layest down, and when thou, thou raises up, right? So basically when you go to bed, when you get out of bed all day, when you're working, what do you do? You teach your children the Word of God, His ways, His precepts, His testimonies. And what does that do? It shows us, and this is my point, that God's Word cleanses us and it gives us a path that we are to walk in. Now, if you're lost or you're mad at God or you're depressed or you're, you know, getting bombarded by the system of the world, you're in the wrong system. You've given your first love, your heart, your thoughts to the world and you're asking God to fix it. But God only fixes those things that He can bless when we commit to His ways, right? So again, Deuteronomy 6, verses 6 through 7. Also, in Ecclesiastes 12.1. Now, we're talking about the path that God's Word gives His believers, His disciples, His chosen one. Amen. Solomon exhorted, he said, Remember now the, thy Creator in the days of the youth, of your youth. See, God stole from us while we were in our youth because the devil baited the trap about how pretty the girls are, how fun the drugs are. How popular and how impressed people would be if you were a sports and you used your gifts for the world and you wanted to be a world champion. You wanted to be the best of the best. There's nothing wrong with that, but we must do it in the ramifications of God's ways, God's word. Be a champion of Christ. That's why I work with the FCA. That's why I speak at universities. That's why I work with children because I want to give God the glory for what he did in and through my life. And your life is very important as well. He has stored up in you great things. Now listen again to what the psalmist declares. Oh God, this is Psalm 71 and verse 17. He says, Oh God, that thou taught me from my youth, and hereto have I declared thy wondrous works. So God taught David wondrous works. David, as we know, was not a perfect man by any means, but God said he's a man after my own heart. Why? Because when his back was against the wall, he praised the Lord. And God gave him a path. God gave him instruction. And so we see that the Word prevents us from wandering. Are you wandering through life right now? This is because you've maybe built your house on the sand or maybe you've taken the wide gate of entertainment and the world system and, and you're not signaling to the world that you are a, a true believer and Christ-like. The word Christian means so many things. The word God means so many things when there's a God of the world with a small g. We hear in this teaching and this broadcast talking about God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. And so the Word prevents us from wandering when we seek God with our whole heart. You can't just be a Christian on the, on Sunday. And, and, and that, that, that too is going to you know begin to go away. We have to understand the signs, the times, the feasts, the harvest. And, and that way we truly understand the prophetic Word of God. And you've got to dig deep. And you've got to give attention to it. Now listen to Proverbs 21. We're talking about the Word provides a path for the children of God. After you become a, a child of God, God's Holy Spirit begins to reveal to you things to do, things to be ridded of. He prunes your life from evil works. He gives you forgiveness so you shouldn't go back and feel sad. You should be excited about your life. Amen. 
So Proverbs 21, 16, the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding. See, you're covered when you're in understanding of God's word and you're putting attention and time and work into studying and being with him. When you wander away from that, he says, shall remain in the congregation of the dead. That's why I've said, you know, everybody thinks that God is for everybody. Certainly he created everything. Others have choose to denounce his name and do wicked and perverse things in their secret and dark societies, their organization, their cultures, their rituals, their yoga, their and all that Middle Eastern sorcery garbage that has creeped its way into the house of God by false teaching. And so they have a form of godliness, but they deny his power, right? Many of you know how I think about that. Hosea 9.17 says this, My God will cast them away because they did not hearken unto him and they shall be wanderers among the nations now currently we see this happening in our world people are wandering they've come out from under the understanding of what god's relationship and their truth is all about and so that's fine but it's a free will you made a decision to only love god on sundays half-heartedly occasionally when you need him god was a jealous god he wants our attention our love and our service through stewardship and overseeing the things that he's blessed us with in our life that's where true peace comes from so don't be a wanderer right be a whosoever right whosoever shall love god with all their heart will be blessed by the principles of his word in text you're being taught things that are not true in god's word that's your responsibility. Find the right teaching. Amos 8, 11, and 12 says this, Behold, the day comes, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine into the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst of water, but of hearing of the word of God. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run and they uh, to and fro and seek the word of the Lord, and they shall not find it. Right? Why? Because their hearts are not right and they're following their father of lies. Now that is deception and they are worshiping false things. They are covenant. They are idolatrous. They are, they are uh, passive and they are into all kinds of perverse things and they are caught in religion which is religion kills. It even kills our Christ, our Lord and Savior Jesus. Prophetically, God sent him as an example to buy us back from our sins. And so let's go on and talk about the word stored up in my heart will keep us from sinning. So we need the word to keep us to understand our salvation. Thus, we would be saved from self and from false religions. But in the times and the signs of the times we live in today, you don't even know with AI and computer censoring and all the garbage to come we are walking into a place we've never been before but god said these things are to come so we must be grounded and rooted and cleansed by the washing of the word of god in our life it is everything it is our sword for battle and when you come you better know how to speak it you better know how to think it you better know how to sing it you better have the Word of God wholeheartedly saturating you so that you can walk through this world and tell the world that we're going to spend eternity comes for us. Amen? So, what keeps us from sinning, knows about salvation. Let's go on. Psalms 37 says this in verse 31. The law of God, uh, the law of His God in His heart, none of His steps shall slide. Number one, it's your God. Make Him personal. Not a religious God that you've got to go bow down and pray to priests and temples and do all these crazy theology things that, you know, in their theology, their rituals are so far from God. They twist, they pervert, they use blood sacrifices. They have all kinds of no windows on their buildings. You, I, I think you guys are grown enough to know what I'm talking about, but it is wicked and it is perverse. So they twist it 
but the law of His God, your God. Make Him personal and have a relationship with Him. In His heart, none of these things, none of His steps shall slide. Now, we're not going to take time because of time is limited, but Matthew 4, 1 through 10, you'll begin to see how the devil tempted Jesus. And he replied, each time in those temptings and temptations that it is written, what is written? God's Word gave Jesus the authority, the power, and the victory over Satan. And so you and I have to use the Word, the sword of the Spirit, and the full armor of God to be victorious. And so we see it. Jesus used the Word. you got to use the Word over your circumstances and your family, your community, your state, and your nation. We must put God back where He belongs. And how do we do that? By being vocal, being bold, being courageous, and being in love with the one that has blessed us in the very beginning. Jer Jeremiah records his attitude towards God's Word in, verse, in chapter 15 and verse 16. He says, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And Thy word was used unto me the joy of and rejoicing of my heart for I am called by thy name O Lord God of hosts Jeremiah was a prophet and each one of us have our own prophetic leadings leanings and things that God wants to speak into our life not everybody that says they're a prophet or a bishop or a pastor or evangelist is in fact that they disqualify themselves because they are able to go into these systems and and, 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 they, and their heart is not right. But we see Jeremiah says he brought him great joy and rejoicing in his heart. For he is called. And I want to say this. If you're watching this today, you are called. I've been called. Answer the call of God on your life. If you're frustrated because you have gifts and talents and, and you don't see them come into fruition in your life, you need to get into a relationship with God and surrender those gifts back to Him and see what He does. And that's all I've done is I've used my life and my platform in sports and the arenas and things that I've been blessed to understand and be crowned in is, is to give those things to God and it continues to grow into many things. And God is waiting to grow and to bless you. So say that. Say, I am called of God and I want to walk with God in covenant in other words, you sign a contract with Him that says, My God shall do the things He says that He will do as I do the things that He's commanded me to do. And His commandments are good for us because they bless us, provide for us, and protect us. Amen. So let's go on and look at this a little bit. Now, now we're going to shift gears for time. We talked about the Word cleanses us. The Word shows us a clear path when we put the word in our heart we use the example of the psalmist david we use the uh, praying we uh, prophet named jeremiah and we looked at hosea and amos and all these books of the bible to tell you that god's got a path for you to be on riding on course if you feel these things coming against you god has given you the comforter the teacher the holy spirit to help you now, let's go on and look at this from a different perspective. In the same passage, we see that we are to praise the Lord. That our praise would be a blessing to God. I'm tired of always going to God when I just need something from Him. What He really needs, He doesn't need anything. But what He needs me to do is submit, surrender, serve, love, walk out His plan and His path. And His praising Him is a correct way to to love Him, right? Consider Psalms 34, 1. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Now, when do we do it? We do it all times. Why? Because the word continually is there. And what are we doing? We're praising Him with my mouth continually. Just meditate on that Scripture and get a revelation that God wants to love you and you should love God, not in the bad times, but also in the good times, right? That's what the devil does. He gets us into success. 
the greatest temptation for anybody is when you've had some success, are you going to stay on course? Or are you going to turn back to the world and say, aha, I got you. Look at how good I am. You and I would be nothing without Christ in our life. And we need to serve Him that way. And we need to give Him praise in the good times and the bad times. Psalm 68 and verse 11 says, Oh, bless the Lord, ye people, and make His voice of His praise to be heard. When? Everywhere. With boldness, with courage. We don't need to be politically correct. You can worship the Lord today. You can train your children to pray over their food. Have them pray when they're in a public place. Have them pray with their other friends. Be a witness. Be an example. But bless our Lord, His people, by the voice of praise in our life. Now we can also look unto righteousness. Romans. Let's turn over that there just for a second. Romans chapter 10, verses 2 and 3. Let me read that to you real quick. Romans 10, verses uh, 2 and 3 says this, For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God but not according to knowledge. See, that goes out the window. All the worldly knowledge and all your education from the world, it's not that it's not usable, but when people put it in first place as God, then that knowledge and worldly wisdom does not have more power than God. So you have to be well balanced. But he says in verse 3, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. So there you go. Who are they worshiping? Self-righteousness. I don't study the Word so that I can be spiritually controlling other people. There are people in ministry that do that. And God will humble them in due time. I don't have to humble them. I don't have to debate with them. They are so brainwashed that they think that they are somebody when they're really a nobody, right? So get that gone through, but all of us have to fight the temptation to serve self, right? And so we see right here, when we read that passage of Scripture, that they haven't submitted, and so due to that, they are ignorant of God's Word. The greatest tool that Satan used is an ignorant mind devoid of the Word of God. So we put God's Word in our heart, we put it in our minds, and we begin to meditate on it. Amen. Romans 1, verses 16 and 17, we see that God's righteousness only comes through the Gospel today. God's Word also teaches us to praise Him correctly john chapter 4 let me turn over here real quick john chapter 4 and let's look at today let's look at 4 23 and 24 john chapter 4 23 and 24 it says this now listen carefully it says but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. Verse 24 of John 4 says, God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Man, God is so amazing. So we talked about it from Psalms 119. We talked about the Word is a path. Now we're talking about the Word is a praise and God wants us to praise Him, right? So God's Word teaches us to praise Him correctly. That we must use our lips to praise Him. Psalms 51, 15 says, O Lord, open, thy, open Thou my lips and my mouth shall sow forth Thy praise. Amen. Now I know as we quote these quickly, you guys can just go back and rewind to get these and understand the message but i want to i want to share with you uh these scriptures because it's god's word verifying his word we must be a workman rightly dividing the word of truth it takes work it takes energy and passion and i promise you you will only work towards something that you love 
whether it's your bull riding, your team roping, your football, your baseball, your ranching, if you don't love it, you won't last long. So I'm asking you to love God means to love His Word or you'll never be cleansed by it and you won't know understanding of your salvation. You won't know how to praise the Lord. You'll be caught up in all these things that are far from it but have a form of it. Man, that's a revelation for somebody right now. What are you caught in? Who are you following? Whatever feed trough you're getting your spiritual food from uh, could it ultimately turn out to be what you become. Right? We do that with our cattle. You can invest in a little bit of good feed and grain or you can feed them a little garbage and the byproduct would be a better weight gain, right? And so we want to grow spiritually. We got to feed ourselves good nutrients, right? So consider Hebrews 13, 15. He says, By Him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God when continually. You need to understand these words, continually. These are an indicator that God wants us to do it all the time. But we spend only some time with Him. And that's why we're defeated and spiritually deprived. We starve our soul, our mind, our will, and emotion of God's nutrients and resources. And so we're, we're, we're deficient in understanding what is coming against us. He says, God continually, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to His name, His true name, not just the name of some gods that people lip worship, right? Man, we saw the Olympics and the perversion that's going across this nation. And I'm telling you, we need to conquer the beast in our heart. And we need to go out in our communities and rise up and stand together. For not, Do not forsake the assembly of the brethren. Come together. Pray together. Love. Worship. Get ourselves away from these uh, Wi-Fi's and these connections that are just throwing our patterns off and our relationships off. And then we get defeated and we get into a bad place of state of mind in our attitude. So let's come together. Real quickly, 1 Peter 4.11 If any man speak, let him speak of the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God has given. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus. See, you can talk about God, but if you don't know Jesus, there's a kink in the hose. Right? You've got to unkink that. I know and love God and I honor Him, but He said that I was to worship and use the name of Jesus, and so I know them both. That's what's wrong with Catholicism, Mormonism, and baptism, and all these other things that people call themselves religious, and then they wonder why they have no victory over the devil. I don't mean to come against it, but i just got to say it for what it is. And there are great ministries that teach. I'm just saying we've got to know very clearly that, 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 that uh, we have power in the name of Jesus. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus. 1 Peter 4.11 To whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. God's Word verifies God's Word. Every comma, every question mark, Every word, the little word if and but and continually, they mean something. Study them. Break them down in a strong concordance. Look at the footnotes and the references in your Bible and go say, what is God trying to say to me? God says, I want to wash you with the love of my word. But you have to put it in your heart so that you can know your path. You can know how to praise your God when the enemy comes against you. And our praise should reflect genuine love and joy for God. Let's look at Psalms 27, 6. He says, And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies around about me. Therefore, see, therefore I will offer His tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. So repeatedly, again and again, we're seeing these books, these passages, and these men of God of the time of Jesus and in these creation of the world 
saying, I've got to praise the Lord. I've got to be walking His ways, His statutes, His laws, His commandments, His testimonies. And how do you do that? Rejoice. Psalms 33.1 Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous. For praise is commonly for the upright. Now I'm going to read this real quick and we've got to move on to the last point. I hope I can get it in. I'm already behind schedules. But listen to Revelation 19 verses 5 and 7. Revelation 19, 5 and 7 says this, And a voice came forth from the throne saying, Give praise to our God. See, people are praising gods of Hollywood, gods of celebrity, TMS and TMZ, whatever, all these uh, potsy, you know, people following you around with media. But, but he says, Give praise to our God, all ye servants, ye that, hear, uh, ye that fear Him, the small and the great. And I have heard it as were the voice of the great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunder, saying, Hallelujah! For the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigneth. Let us rejoice and be excitingly glad, and let us give the glory unto Him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and His wife has made herself ready. You and I are children of God. We are the bride of Christ. God, through Jesus, loved His church. Not the religious institution of hyper-grace, Calvinism. All these religions will lead you astray. You should not even give attention, time, investment into these things. But you should study the Word of God for yourself. And God will surround you with men to raise you up, to mentor, to disciple you to love you, to bring you into a place of fellowship with the true God. Now let's go on. My last point, I may have to skip over some here because of time, but the Word of God in Psalms 119 shows us a purpose that we may meditate upon His Word. Psalms 1-2 says, But delight in the law of Jehovah, and on His law do we meditate when? Night and day, night and day, night and day. When do we meditate? All the time. We are meditating and praising and walking in the ways of the Word. If you don't know the Word, you will be lost. You will come out from under that understanding and you will be into the generations and, and to the congregation of the dead. Spiritually dead, but living in the body. So, fall in love with His Word. Psalms 145.4 says, Oh, the righteous majesty of thy honor and of thy wondrous works will I meditate. It takes work to spend time in the Word. It takes time to meditate. We don't covet our neighbor. We don't are worshiping and idolizing things of this world, wishing we would have had it, maybe going after it. We stop right where we at and we say, God, this is what you put in my hands to work with. I dedicate it to you. My mind, my lips, my heart belong to thee. I will walk in your path uprighteous, not in selfishness. I don't care what's happening to me politically or uh, through people persecuting me. It does not matter. You cannot hurt a dead man or a dead woman, right? So we have died to self in the flesh so that we may be renewed in the spirit of our mind putting our things on the things above. And if you walk around with that kind of love for your God, I promise you, God will bless you and your family. Real quick, 1 Timothy 4, verses 15 and 16. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. How much? All the way, continually, meditate. Holy, I give myself to your word, right? He says to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. Man, I tell you, in the years, I'm, I'm, I'm reading the Geneva Bible. I'm trying to study God at face value. There's some men that go before me that sow into me that 
Man, it's all about God's Word and Jesus only. I am in the Jesus only Christ-like camp. I don't label myself Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, Holy Ghost, whatever. None of those labels do I allow to put on my life. Why? Because I love God. And I'm studying to show myself approved. And you can do it if you want this kind of victory in your life. And so he says, Take heed unto thyself, unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this thou hast both saved thyself and them that hear it. That's the message of the ministry. Conquering the beast by spurring with Jesus and winning with the Word of God. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. Let's consider the respect that, that Nebuchadnezzar had. Listen to this. Daniel 4, 37. A, a, prof, a prophetic book of God's Word, right? Daniel 4, 37 says, Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extort and honor the king of heaven right the ultimate supreme king of heaven is god the god of abraham isaac and jacob not the gods of this world get that clear in your heart because sometimes in our mind and our heart we're divided we need to sell out to one side the wolf in your heart is the one that you feed the one that you want to starve is the one that you need to neglect Neglect the things of the world and don't buy into it. He says, Praise and exhort the honor of the King of Heaven. For all His works are true and His ways are just. And those that walk in pride, He shall abase. You want to have spiritual pride and think that you're so high that you can control people through your denomination? And you're really somebody? Man, I know pastors that won't even talk to me or answer my call because I haven't read their book. What's that about? That's just an example. I have no place or time for those kind of pastors, right? Because we need to get God's message of His Word, His path, His praise, and now we're talking about His purpose in our life. Amen? 1 Peter 2, nine. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye shall shall sow forth the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. If you feel tired, you feel weary, you feel defeated, it could be that you are just lost and you don't know your path, your praise, and your purpose according to Psalms 119 of what we're studying today. He's called you. You are chosen. The world sees us as peculiar people and they want to come to kill, steal, and destroy so that our message won't get to their people that are lost, asleep, fattened, in darkness, and, 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 and simpletons, right? We've got to wake up and we've got to look at where we're at in our world and we've got to do what God's called us to do. You are chosen. Amen. Revelation 19.1 says, And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto our God. Big G, our God. We serve God. We don't serve the gods that they opened up the Olympics with. We don't serve the gods of the PBR. We don't serve the gods of the NFL. We don't serve all these people. All we can do is love God teach our children, love our country, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and take the narrow gate to this life, and be a light, and be salt, and be righteous in the eyes of our God, and bless that message to people that we encounter on the platform that God gave us, and we delight in God's Word day and night, and we will not forget it. See, some of you know and bear witness the Holy Spirit, what I'm saying to be true. Now we got to put action to our faith and go to work Monday. Now we got to get out to our arena and make the short round on Sunday. And when we get the microphone, we're not giving an upside down cross. We're not going to give God lip service and go to the bar. We're not going to live and do dirty, bad deals and not pay our bills. All of these are a lack of character. God does judge us on who we are and what we are in those things in our personal development. 
But we work with God and God changes us. We come to Him and let Him clean us up. We don't religiously try to clean ourselves up and fall into a, a congregation where nobody sees us. We're watching people all over the internet that we'll never meet. And again, we're watching me on the internet. Many of you watching, I know you. But I'm just saying we've got to open our eyes. Psalms 4, 8 says, In this attitude we shall have. I delight to do Thy will. O oh my God, yea, the law is within my heart. You have to put it there. Romans 7, uh, Romans 7, 22 says, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. See, there's two of you. There's you in the flesh, and it wants to control your life through Satan. Because we live in a fallen world and it has an appetite. And if you give to the eyes, the ears, and the smell, and the taste, you could be having all kinds of problems. God speaks to the heart and He heals you from the inside out. Right? And the last scripture that I want to read for you before I pray with you, because my time is up, is 2 Peter 1, verses 12 through 15. It says, Therefore I, that means you and I, therefore I will not neglect to put you always in remembrance of the things. Right? This is uh, Paul, Peter talking here. And he says, though, we, though ye know them and be established in the present truth, yea, I think I met as long as I am in the tabernacle. I think he's talking about the tabernacle of the body to stir up, but putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed sowed me. Moreover, I will de 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 endeavor that ye may be able, after my de decease, to have these things always in your remembrance. So we see... In 2 Peter 1, verses 12 through 15, there's, time, there's going to come a time when your spirit leaves your body, your tabernacle, and you will be with the Lord and you will get rewarded for the things that you have done, both in the flesh and in the spirit. And so, again, as a recap, as I pray with you this morning about this, on this message this morning about the Word cleanses you. It cleanses your soul, your mind, your will. Your flesh has an appetite and we must denounce and rebuke our flesh so that we don't get caught in these games and these traps that the world is trying to deceive God's children. We have to study to show ourselves men approved. And the Word of God provides cleansing for our path that we are to walk in the Word. It also gives us the purpose of praising and the purpose of how we are to orchestrate the affairs of our life. When we always remember, when we meditate, when we say and speak the Word of God over these situations that we find ourselves in. God is willing, but He comes on His terms. He's no respecter of a person. He's not going to bless you just because you follow Me. He's not going to bless you because you tithe into the works of, of ministries, uh, you know, just different aspects of things around. Understand where you sow your seed. Understand where your mind is. And understand where your family is. And we are to train a child in the way that he will go so that when he's old, he will not depart from it. And you, as an adult, need to be trained as a child by coming to discipleship and getting involved in prayer classes and getting out there and actively engaging and standing up for Christ in the present times that we live in. He will come back as a thief in the night. And when we see these armies coming against Israel, when we see the way people's heart is in our nation, we begin to, you know, at first we're in fear, but then we say God has not given us a spirit of fear. And we use that energy to a new positive place, which is our relationship with Christ. And then we realize we have to endure until the end to be saved. So I want to encourage you to share this message with others. And I want to pray with you right now that we will not be woke for this nation the way they're selling it. 
We will not serve the Jesus that they are playing with and offering because we can't add to God's Word. We can't take away from it. Everybody wants to know and, and to have a prophetic word when it's encouraging. Nobody wants to have a prophetic word when it chastises us or corrects us or challenges us that we're doing something wrong. So I love you. This ministry loves you. My family, we want to sow into your life. Let me pray with you right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father, we come before you. We ask for forgiveness where we've had fear, where we've had doubt, where we've had unbelief of your word. We have been weary. We have wandered astray off of the path. We weren't riding on course. We weren't conquering the beast. We understand that the flesh goes after the bait that Satan has put before us. And relationships have been broken. Families have been destroyed. Uh, world armies have been depleted. And so, Father, right now we ask, forgive us. And Lord, let us have Your Word in our hearts that we may not sin against You. Let our minds be so full of Your Word, not of the world, so that we may know and hear You clearly that You could direct the footsteps of righteous men and women. And so I thank you, Father. We have purpose to live. We are here with purpose. We know our purpose. And we have praise in our lips. And we have a plan of action to be in the Word, to cover ourselves with the full armor of God according to Ephesians 6. And today, Lord, we are stronger as a nation if we will put you in your proper place and get beyond all this deception that has creeped into your church and we will make ourselves ready for your return as your bride. We praise you, we love you, and we ask, Lord, forgive us, save us from the wicked one. We praise you and give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Well, I imagine I am. When I get tired, I, I may ramble a little bit. But listen, I'm Scott Mendes. This is Riding on Course, a weekly Bible study to sow into your life. And I pray that you'll share this message and I pray that you will be cleansed by the washing of God's Word and you will go out and about and be raised up as a chosen one and engage the world around you. And if you'll do that, send us your testimonies and your praise reports. I'm Scott Mendes. God loves you. We love you. Continue to ride on course and conquer the beast. Until next week, we'll see you down the road. Bye-bye.